and welcome everyone. I'm Anahi Basnajan, the Global Lead for Client Experience Programs at Workplace. And I'm delighted that you're joining us for our brand new Chief Workplace Officer MCG live interview series, where we catch up with our amazing customers and partners from all around the world to hear how they've been using Workplace to do incredible work and hopefully inspire you to get some new tips and tricks to try in your organization. I am so excited to welcome Stuart Bagnell, who is Chief of Culture at LastMinute.com, as our very first guest in the series. LastMinute.com won the Remote Working Award in EMEA in our recent Workplace Customer Success Awards, and you're about to learn why. Uh, we're also going to have five minutes Q&A at the end of this chat, so add your questions in the comments, and we'll take a few to ask Stuart uh, near to the end of this. To set the scene a little bit, LastMinute.com has employees spread across 10 countries and has seen three record-breaking years for the business before the pandemic hit. Suddenly, the travel industry was at a standstill, and 50% of LastMinute.com's workforce quickly went into lockdown in Italy, with more to follow. The company needed to stop panic amongst their newly remote workforce, while also pivoting the business to deal with almost hourly changes to their operations. Communications became their number one priority, and they used Workplace to help with that strategy. They focused on transparent rapid response comms, kept a focus on well-being, and seized the opportunity to turn remote working into smart working, and it is here to stay. Stuart, hi, how are you? Hi, Anna Heed. I'm very well, thank you. Um, hi to everyone that's joined uh, live or watching on demand. Um, very excited to be here with you talking uh, part of this new series. Oh, thank you so much for joining us today and thanks for sharing your insight into remote working at lapsminute.com and what it all means. Um, we're going to dive straight in here as we have loads of questions for our customers. So we'd love to get your thoughts and insights on that if that's okay. Yes, let's, let's dive in. Super happy to share, okay. particularly with this audience as well. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. So it's been quite the year. Um, how has the pandemic permanently altered ways of working and the culture at lapsminute.com? Um, so, I mean, it really has been quite the year. Um, I think we, we all um, we all know that. But um, just looking back, I think, you know, for us, things were going really, really well in 2019. Um, it was a record year for, for the company. Um, and actually, you know, it was almost one year ago to this day, um, we were all getting very excited about the launch of our new partnership with the London Eye. So um, we were sponsoring the London Eye. And it's when the pandemic then really started to take hold. So um, our headquarters was hit first. Um, for those who don't know, our headquarters is based in Switzerland, which is just over the border from Italy. Um, it's a border region. Um, and it's a lot of our employees are based in Lombardy. So, I mean, they were the first and the worst impacted. So around 50% of people went into lockdown, as you just said. But I think it gave us a bit of a head start in terms of what was coming um, and the severity of it. I think we realised quickly, I mean, I'm based in London and it was, a, it was crazy. Um, but we knew we had to go full remote everywhere fast and, and make it work. Um, I mean, it was easier in some ways as we're a digital company anyway, um, and we did have an existing remote working policy. So, I mean, those sorts of things were already in place. But, you know, on top of that, we had to, as you say, pivot the business to deal with significant changes to our operations. I mean, it was impossible to prepare for. Um, I think we went from a comprehensive booking engine uh, to a cancellation machine, and it's been overwhelming for our customers and our employees, and still challenging at the moment. But um, as you said, in order to stop the panic and the fear that was spreading, um, comms, yeah, completely right, they became our number one priority. Um, we decided to adopt that a newsroom mentality. I think um, that was kind of the initial approach. Um, um, the workplace tool was fundamental for us for, for that to be able to happen. So um, we ran weekly virtual Q&A sessions uh, with our CEO. Um, these were attended, I think, by around a thousand employees each time. Um, so uh, they were live and they became the kind of main anchor that really kept people informed in the most transparent way. Um, people were motivated by them and really reassured. I mean, when you're hearing the consistent messages over and over again, week by week, even when you're saying the same thing, you know, that repetition was, was great and that level of visibility for our leadership. But we were also continuously drip feeding um, through posts um, and through groups and through uh, the different channels. Uh, 
about how and what's happening operationally as well. So um, that was important. And then, you know, we obviously were able to leverage uh, workplace for wellbeing um, engagement and connecting the people because uh, that was probably the biggest challenge. That was a lot. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. And we actually shared uh, the video uh, as part of your entry uh, in this group earlier on, and we just love seeing the engagement from everyone. I actually have a copper flamingo here. I was, I was so close to putting on my desk <laughs> as a nod. Uh, um, I love so, it. Uh, flamingo, flamingo yeah. crazy. You've got to love flamingo. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, could you tell us more about um, what smart working is and you know how would you define it at lastminute.com? Sure. Okay. Um, I think what for me is really important is to sort of stay at the beginning that right now I don't think we're smart working. Right now we're in the pandemic and, you know, we've been forced to all work remotely. But um, we had toyed with the idea before the um, uh, the pandemic had taken place because I think that sort of flexible culture um, is something that works quite well, particularly for the travel um, industry and our, and our business. But I would define smart working as sort of a more strategic and holistic approach to flexible working. Um, I think it's more than just working from home. Um, I think it's about bringing innovation um, in technology together with workplace design, workplace environment and giving people more choice um, and, you know, supporting the work life uh, experience. It's always been on our radar, um, as I said before, um, but uh, we had a very in-person sort of setup. So, you know, we would really rely on those human connections. People traveled heaps uh, for meetings, for training, for conferences. Uh, we even had an Erasmus program. Um, so employees could uh, spend up to six months working from one of our other locations. So, you know, everything was kind of built on those personal relationships and connections and that sort of, we live for the holidays ethos. Um, but, you know, um, when it came to smart working and whether or not people were uh, interested in it, we actually asked them. So we did a huge survey. Um, feedback was around 83% of people um, were pro remote working, whether fully or um, whether it was uh, sort of like a, spending a couple of days in the office. Um, I mean, and I'm sure, you, I mean, we can all relate to this. I mean, some of the things, even myself, saving on commuting, I mean, traveling uh, an hour and a quarter each way. I don't live in London. Um, right. You know, there's cost savings associated with that, and there's been some great chance and opportunity um, to spend time with family. I can caveat that by saying this was back in May. <laughs> yeah. People might feel different now that they've been stuck inside for a lot longer. But, um, sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I think, you know, um, employees who weren't happy to work remote work, it was all around their personal situation, you know, whether, you know, it's difficult if you're working in an apartment, you have children and family, that's a really difficult situation to be in. And, you know, we really have to understand and empathize with that. And, you know, a lot of people have childcare issues as well, which I think um, is something that we had to really consider. Um, I would also say, um, that, you know, for employees, uh, they pretty much told us that uh, remote working has improved collaboration across offices. And I think that's mainly driven by the fact that, you know, when you've got a headquarters and you're often the only remote person joining calls or meetings, um, you find you're missing out on so much uh, of that small talk or those little pieces of information or agreements that are made or decisions that are made, um, you know, and when you're online and you can't interact the same way. So it's really put people on the same level playing field. Um, people have also said the feedback is that it's difficult for spontaneous and creative brainstorms um, and, you know, when you want to pick the brains of your colleague who's just sat next to you, hey, what do you think of this? And I think, um, yeah. you know, again, there have been some of the challenges. But um, I think, you know, we've got a plan. We're going to be moving, I think, to more of a hybrid remote working model, um, which um, is going to be quite interesting. But, um, you know, we've got to build a new rhythm. I think, you know, understanding all of the feedback from the employees, Focusing on being able to expand our talent pool is going to be something which um, we hadn't done before. We're recruiting already um, and looking at uh, recruiting from other uh, countries, 
companies <laughs> and other companies. But um, obviously, uh, looking at our office space as well, how do we reduce our office space? So we've made some big decisions already. Um, you know, we're looking at this as an opportunity in and amongst the crisis. But um, yeah, uh, I think for me, that's what smart working is. I feel like I've really over answered the question. <laughs> Right. You know, we don't, we hear about remote working a lot. So I think smart working and just understanding your definition of that and how, what it means to your business is super interesting. So thank you for that. Um, we kind of touched on it, but maintaining engagement with colleagues remotely is really important, but it's also really hard at the moment. Like you've already touched on, you know, you're missing out on those water cooler moments. You're not always getting to just turn to the person next to you and ask them a question. You know, how are you keeping engagement high um, at lastminute.com? I mean, it's a really tough, it's been really tough. Um, yeah. I think, you know, um, when you're looking to engage with your people, I mean, I think, you know, the first step is creating that genuine sense of um, belonging and inclusion. Um, and that's really hard when you're when you're remote or you're online. I mean, you know, you've got to really understand um, those different nuances and, and how you're actually going to approach it. But I always think the answer to keeping employees engaged is to be engaged with your employees. I mean, um, in the normal um, world pre-pandemic, you know, we were running regular engagement pulses. Um, you know, we had a really strong uh, level of engagement with people. And I think that, you know, the areas improvement are always those um, which I see as trends in other companies as well. You know, people want to grow, people want to learn, people want to develop. But, you know, with everything that happened with the pandemic, um, we decided to change the approach. Um, and we started, uh, we ran a, a well-being survey which I think there are two purposes. Uh, firstly, it was a, an opportunity to highlight the mental health resources because we knew people were really struggling. Um, but also, where should we, um, as a, an internal team and a culture team, where should we focus our efforts? And, you know, where do we think we can win with employees? But um, we had a good response to it. I mean, we had about 65% of people respond and say that they were... Um, generally coping okay but we knew and I mean there's no surprises when I say this that anxiety and fear uh, around job security were kind of the main the main drivers and um, you know tackling anxiety um, I mean fears around job security we dealt with through the uh, live Q&A's and the continuous feedback to, uh, to employees through our leadership team but anxiety is a difficult one so we launched our Be Well campaign on Workplace um, which I think featured in the video um, that we submitted. But we were trying to like foster a sense of community and support, but it was very much an all hands on deck approach. I don't want to personally take the credit for it because it was really the team and the employees. Um, it was getting people involved and we sort of reached out and did an appeal to people to say, hey, guys, who has got any sort of skills in these sort of areas that you could potentially help us with? And, you know, we uncovered, I mean, it's so interesting. Who knew that Federica in our communications team was also in a previous life a, a salsa instructor? Um, oh, and I know, it's crazy. And then, uh, you know, you we had... Um, a meditation uh, coach, we had a yoga teacher, we then had, uh, so you can tell we ran a fitness, uh, a fitness program, uh, which featured, you know, hit yoga, meditation, salsa. Um, and this was all employee driven. So, you know, in their houses, expose, I'm in my living room on my yoga mat. And, you know, people would join. Um, and it was amazing. It was amazing. It also sort of led into the social side. And I think the social side gets a lot of um, airtime. Uh, so, you know, people doing the quizzes, um, you know, having cooking and cocktail sessions and stuff like that. Um, it's different when it's uh, at the weekends as well. So, you know, people were putting on painting classes for kids, um, uh, which I think was, you know, super nice, super unique, um, and trying to help with that childcare side of things. But um, my personal favourite, someone created a Wheel of Fortune, um, you know, uh, the old style, and we used to have, a, it was uh, forfeit with drinking, but um, not that I'm trying to promote drinking, but um, a bit of fun, you know, you need a little light, a bit of light relief, you need to blow off steam, but 
Um, and then at Christmas, we did um, a sensory sensations Christmas experience. So um, this was very much get ingredients, you have to smell them together. And, you know, we ran it with our CEO who um, always likes to get involved in, in these sorts of things. Um, it's be very much one of the team. But we did all of this with no budget. So I think, you know, that's kind of what was amazing that, you know, everyone really pulled together. Um, and, you know, it felt like we made a nine course meal out of a cheese sandwich, which um, <laughs> which was quite difficult in these times. That's amazing. I love that. <laughs> um, on top of that, then the uh, learning and development teams, you know, they pulled in, they helped develop soft skill programs on how to remote work. So, you know, how to support managers through this process, how to support their people. Um, and, you know, all of these things really, really did engage the workforce. And I did really feel that everyone was um, sort of in it together and really looking to, to overcome it. But I think right now the challenge is different. Um, I think people craving interactions um possibly not with the people that are um in their teams i think you spend all day talking to the same people over and over again and you miss those people in the kitchen in the corridors and when you're in office and at the same time you've got a video call fatigue i mean i think everyone wants to unplug so it's almost like oh how do i how do i manage through this this is a slightly unique situation but we've been experimenting with smaller sessions um, having open rooms for just coming and have coffee. So it's kind of open in the morning. It's not mandatory. We've got other rooms that we've been, or groups that we've been setting up so that, um, you know, have a bit of a loose structure so people can turn up and feel that there's a purpose. But right now we're creating culture bubbles and using workplace um, groups to set up um, based on interests. So, you know, people that like hiking, all of the social side of things, um, we're not scared to now include the social side or the social aspect within um, within our communication strategy or within workplace. You know, it's not all business, business, business. You know, when you're in the office, I think there's a percentage of your day where you are just interacting, you are walking around, and it's where can you go and do that when you're online? And I think it's trying to find ways to replicate that. That's sort of kind of important right now. Well, that's fantastic. I love all of those things and. Um, yeah, we, we've been feeling the same, to be honest, so it's, it's really nice to hear um, some of those things. Um, the pandemic has obviously changed how you use Workplace, which you've touched on. What are your um, adoption and engagement rates like? And any advice for other Workplace customers in this area? Yeah, I mean, I, I like this question. Um, and I think it's uh, always really interesting um, to understand what other people have been doing. I mean, <laughs> I have to say, I, this is why I love the group that we're in. I mean, um, I'm not going to lie. I do take the ideas and look at um, some of the great ideas that you guys come up with and see how we can um, adapt them for ourselves. But in terms of adoption, we've always had quite a high rate. And I think that was because um, when we implemented um, Workplace, our CEO was a huge ambassador right from the very beginning. Um, he was very much, come on, let's do this. I want to be involved. How? What, what do you need? And he was chomping at the bit. And I think having the leadership team that engaged right from the very beginning um, played a huge part in that. I think, you know, the, the masses are then drawn. Uh, what's Marco talking about? You know, um, what, what what's being said? Um, and interacting and commenting on people's posts. I mean, they are huge tools and they're so easy and straightforward, particularly for the leaders. But... I think that really, really is a good foundation for getting um, usage and adoption. With our comms team, um, they've taken kind of a business partner approach for different departments um, and different functions around the business, because obviously people use it slightly different depending on the type of business, but they try and educate, say, okay, this is best practice and for the things you're trying to achieve, this is how we would do it. Um, and, you know, that I think made a big difference. Um, I also think in terms of content, the video straight to camera, you don't always have to write something down. You can probably say something and be much more engaging in a quick pre-record or a quick live update um, and get across something with emotion and uh, the different feelings behind it um, and that intention. And they always get the best reactions. So, you know, when you look at the different trends on the different posts, I mean, they just by far are the ones that have always peaked um, for us. Um, and then, you know, just the social side and the people side, I mean, humanizing it as much as possible. So, um, 
when we have new starters, you know, we post a new starter, say, hey, hey world, uh, we've got someone new in the Pink Palace. Um, uh, we write a small profile with them. <laughs> it's all about the pink. And then, um, you know, again, they always get the highest number of uh, reactions. And, you know, as a new person joining a company, particularly digitally, um, it's really, really nice. You know, uh, it's a softer approach instead of meeting people face to face. Hello, hello, explain yourself over and over again. It's kind of a nice welcome um, in doing it that way. So I think, um, yeah, our engagement strategy, it's all workplace first at the moment. We're trying to focus, get rid of focusing on emails, get, um, you know, everything focused in this one place, strong community. So if you do that, I think you'd probably have good success rate. Good success rate. Take oh, back fantastic. In. <laughs> Such good advice, and absolutely, that is what the Chief Workplace Officers Group is for, for everybody to come and steal each other's ideas and learn from each other. So I think there's some really good nuggets in there um, for sharing. So thank you so much. And I guess, what have you learned uh, through this whole process, Stuart, you know, over the pandemic, especially over the last year, from both a personal and from a business perspective? Any Anything that you've learned? Uh, yes, I, I think there's, there's been some huge learnings. Um, I think if I was to say professionally, um, I think that, you know, we have to be able to adapt to survive and a business culture uh, needs to be agile and flexible. And um, I don't think relying on what's worked in the past uh, is always going to work for the future. Um, but if you hold on to your core values, remember that your employees are your business essentially and if you take care of them they'll take care of you um personally um i think you know it's it's been a roller coaster personally i think you know I've, i'm in the same boat as everyone else so for me i try not to take as much for granted um i love the fact that you know i have been forced to slow down appreciate my friends appreciate my family um i've learned also it's possible to argue over the use by date of frozen beef um, <laughs> at 7 a.m. in the morning and don't drink wine on a Monday. <laughs> as tempting as it may be, they probably the right person was. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I can resonate with a lot of them. Well, these are my questions. So thanks so much for taking the time uh, to speak with me, Stuart. These were kind of made up of things customers asked before. Uh, we'll take a question or two from the comments. Um, and if we don't get to all of them, uh, Stuart's kind of agreed to respond to the comments and share his insight where he can. So let me have a quick look at these questions. Um, our first question is from um, Manuela, uh, com specialist at booking.com. She said, I love the Erasmus initiative. Did it help with the engagement? Massively. I mean, um, it's really great for cross-pollination, particularly if you're working in uh, multiple cultures um, and multiple countries. So, um, you know, you learn a lot. I mean, I think as everyone experiences uh, in just communications in general is that, you know, when you're dealing with other countries and other cultures, understanding what the nuances are can be really difficult. But, you know, having someone from uh, a different office come and actually work with you, I mean, you're getting that inside scoop and say, oh, actually, this is how people work. This is why we're doing it the way we're doing it. And um, and it really does help um people understand each other more and get along but and also it's you know they love the fact that um they can come and be um experiencing different uh side of uh, or different country i mean it's it's pretty amazing that's absolutely fantastic um anything else you'd like to share with us that maybe we didn't cover i mean it's hardly surprising that you won the remote working award given everything that has uh, has gone on Anything else you'd like to share or anything you think people should know? Yeah, I think in terms of this smart working, I mean, it's uh, it's, a, it's now a, a full time project um, on how can we try and take the best of what uh, we've been learning. I think, you know, um, we're taking the plunge essentially. So creating this strategy uh, going forward um, is on the I mean, it's a company wide objective. The challenge is, I think we don't know yet what we don't know. And, and as I said, that whilst now we're dealing with the pandemic, um, it's not the, it's not going to be the reality when things start to become a new normal again. So, you know, um, 
how will the hybrid model work? You know, we've reduced some of our office spaces. We've got to obviously understand the best setup and design and how and when people can come in. Um, we're currently just going through trying to draft a policy and that brings along um, so many challenges because you have different labor laws. You've just, you know, got different rules in different countries that you've got to understand and digest. So, um, you know, for me, it's going to be an interesting learning curve. I think that, you know, you've got a plan right now and you think that this is the one, uh, this is how it's going to be. But um, if I'm to look at what I've written now and then compare it with what perhaps, say, um, we're doing in September, it'd be quite interesting to see where the challenges and what the big differences were. So I suppose it's saying I don't think we've got all the answers, but, you know, it's one of those things where we're learning along the way. Absolutely. And we'll take uh, one more. Uh, this is from Craig from the Market Star team. What are your top three favourite features on Workplace? Um, I love the live, um, the live streaming and live events. I think, you know, um, it was something ooh, like we're doing now. Uh, it's something that we always and have been trying to do um, a couple of years ago. And I think, you know, in terms of technology uh, roadmaps, uh, it kind of felt like it did a mass 180 shift when the pandemic hit in. And I feel secretly happy we got all the development that we were hoping for and asking for way back when um so yeah i love the um love live streaming um i love the q a um i'm really pleased that that evolved so that you know you've got a face to the questions um and the poll that you can vote for um and then also um i'm super passionate about the insights um that sort of the back end features i love being able to really dig in deep to understand what works, how people are really engaging, and um, you know what makes um, a good communication successful. Uh, so they would be my top three, I would say. Fantastic. Stuart, thank you so much for your time today. We've learned so much and appreciate you coming to speak to us and take part in the first ever interview in our MCG um, Live series. Uh, I'm super, to super happy to be part of it and thank you for inviting me and thank you for wearing a pink t-shirt as well. <laughs> oh, oh, and my pink eyeshadow, which you can't see. But, um, what does it yeah. say? What does it say? Fiesta? Um, Fiesta Beach Repeat. Um, I'm trying to bring uh, the holiday vibes um, in the uh, middle of uh, um, Rainy Cloud. We're looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, thank you, Stuart. <laughs> So there you have Thank it, folks. You. That's the end of our first CWO MCG live interview for today. Huge thanks to you, Stuart, for giving us insight into life at lastminute.com. And join us next time where we'll be chatting to even more customers from the workplace community all around the world. So stay safe and thanks for tuning in.